Good afternoon. The Secretary General uh, will preview tomorrow's extraordinary meeting of NATO Defence Ministers, uh, and then we'll have time for your questions. Secretary General. Good afternoon. NATO Defence Ministers uh, will meet tomorrow uh, at the defining moment for our security. President Putin's brutal invasion of Ukraine is causing death and destruction every day. It has shocked the world and shaken the international order. For months, we have exposed Russia's long list of lies. They claimed they did not plan to invade Ukraine, but they did. They claimed they were withdrawing their troops, but they sent in even more. They claim to be protecting civilians, but they are killing civilians. Now, they are making absurd claims about biological labs and chemical weapons in Ukraine. This is just another lie. And we are concerned that Moscow could stage a false flag operation, possibly including chemical weapons. The Ukrainian people are fighting bravely, defending their homes and their future, and we must support them. Tomorrow we will be joined by the Ukrainian Defense Minister Alexei Resnikov and our other partners Georgia, Finland, Sweden and the European Union. The whole world has condemned this senseless wall, war, war. NATO allies, the European Union and other countries have introduced unprecedented sanctions on Russia. For many years, NATO allies have trained tens of thousands of Ukrainian troops. Many of them are now fighting on the front lines. Allies have also provided significant quantities of critical equipment including anti-tank and air defense weapons, drones, ammunition and fuel. This training and equipment is helping Ukraine to defend itself. Ukraine has a fundamental right to self-defense enshrined in the UN Charter, and NATO allies and partners will continue to help Ukraine uphold that right. By providing military equipment, and financial and humanitarian assistance. NATO's core task is to protect and defend all allies. We have responded to this crisis quickly, activating our defense plans, raising our readiness, and deploying the NATO response force for the first time for collective defense. There are now hundreds of thousands of forces on heightened alert across the alliance, 100,000 US troops in Europe, and around 40,000 troops under direct NATO command, mostly in the eastern part of the alliance. Backed by major air and naval power, as well as air defenses. The U.S. is currently deploying Patriot batteries to Poland, and Germany and the Netherlands are also deploying Patriots to Slovakia. All of this sends an unmistakable message. An attack on one ally will be met with a decisive response from the whole alliance. Russia's invasion of Ukraine and its military integration of Belarus creates a new security reality on the European continent. So we need to reset NATO's military posture for this new reality. Tomorrow, ministers will start an important discussion on concrete measures to reinforce our security for the longer term in all domains. On land, this could include substantially more forces in the eastern part of the alliance at higher readiness and with more pre-positioned equipment. We will also consider major increases to our air and naval deployments, 
strengthening our integrated air and missile defense, reinforcing our cyber defenses, and holding more and larger exercises. I expect we will task NATO's military commanders to develop options for our Madrid summit in June. Major reinforcements of our defense will require major increases in investment. I welcome that Germany and other allies have already announced they are stepping up. And I encourage all allies to spend a minimum of 2% of GDP on defense. We must do more, so we must also invest more. To protect peace and freedom and uphold our values at this critical time. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. Okay, we'll start with uh, CNN. Thank you. I'm wondering whether you can say whether the NATO alliance has seen evidence that China has been providing uh, Russia with any kind of assistance that would help it on the battlefield, whether that's military equipment or MREs, uh, food for troops, anything of that kind. And also, uh, with regard to the situation that we saw earlier this week with Russia, uh, targeting a military base very close to Poland's border. I'm wondering what you can say about the kind of red lines and whether there would be any kind of consequences if a missile, for example, were accidentally to enter NATO territory or on purpose. Thank you. So NATO's core responsibility, our main responsibility, is to protect and defend all NATO allies, so one billion people in 30 different countries and to uh, ensure that we also do that, uh, do that uh, now in a, a more dangerous security situation in Europe uh, caused by the uh, invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Uh, we have increased the presence in the eastern part of the lines, we have increased the readiness of our troops, and we are deploying more capabilities, especially to the eastern part of the lines. So an attack on one ally will trigger the response of the whole alliance, and we are there to protect and defend every inch of NATO allied territory. Um, when we see more military activities, when we see actually fighting going on close to NATO borders, there is always a risk for incidents and accidents. And therefore we have to make sh every effort to prevent such incidents and accidents, and if they happen, to make sure that they don't spiral out of control and create really dangerous situations. Uh, we are very closely monitoring uh, the uh, airspace. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, the border areas uh, uh, around NATO. And our military commanders also have uh, the lines uh, to their Russian commanders to help to prevent incidents and accidents and also prevent them from spiraling out, uh, spiraling out of control if they uh, happen. Um, uh, on China, so China should join the rest of the world uh, condemning strongly the brutal invasion of Ukraine by Russia. And uh, 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 any support to Russia, military support, any other type of support will actually help Russia conduct a brutal war against an independent sovereign nation, Ukraine, and help them to continue to wage war which is causing uh, death, uh, suffering, and uh, an uh, enormous amount of destruction. Uh, so uh, China has uh, uh, an obligation as a member of the UN Security Council to actually support uh, and uphold international law and the Russian invasion of, uh, of uh, uh, Ukraine is a blatant violation of international law. So we call on Russia to uh, clearly condemn uh, the invasion and of course not support uh, Russia and we are closely monitoring uh, uh, any uh, um, signs of uh, support from uh, uh, China to, uh, to Russia. We'll go to the National uh, News Agency of Ukraine, over there. Yeah. Uh, Dmitry Shkurko, National News Agency of Ukraine. Secretary General, NATO have a glorious uh, story uh, of uh, supporting uh, some countries and preventing bloodshed, for example, like it happened in uh, Sarajevo, in Kosovo, and so on. Uh, what is the threshold for NATO uh, when uh, uh, the Russian killings uh, will, you know, 
will overcome that threshold uh, to uh, NATO for d direct uh, involvement. And uh, the f uh, short uh, follow-up uh, because of that, if you follow the Russian rhetorics, they are not going to stop uh, purely in Ukraine. So that uh, the question is, uh, isn't the right time for NATO to intervene to defeat and to broke the Putin's military machine while it stick in Ukraine while waiting uh, when uh, the Russian bombs will be falling to the European capitals. Thank you. NATO allies have supported Ukraine for many years uh, and especially since uh, Russia invaded uh, Ukraine for the first time back in 2014. And uh, NATO allies uh, uh, like the United Kingdom, the United States, uh, Canada have uh, also helped to train tens of thousands of Ukrainian forces, uh, special operation forces and other troops. And they are now uh, bravely fighting um, and resisting the invading Russian forces. Uh, and I think this support over many years has proven extremely important uh, in uh, strengthening the Ukrainian armed forces, and Ukrainian armed forces are much bigger, much stronger, much better equipped, much better trained now than in 2014. Uh, uh, and I'm glad that NATO allies have helped to achieve that uh, with the training and with the equipment. Then, of course, it's first and foremost the courage uh, of the Ukrainian armed forces and the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian political leadership that has actually enabled them to fight back, uh, to slow down, to resist the brutal invasion uh, conducted by the Russian Federation and, uh, and which is a responsibility of President uh, Putin. Uh, and it is President Putin who is responsible for this war. He can end this war now, withdraw all his troops now, and then engage in good faith in a, uh, in a political effort to find a diplomatic uh, solution. So we are calling on President Putin to do exactly uh, that. Um, um, uh, the, then NATO's, uh, Ukraine is a, is a highly valued uh, partner uh, which we have supported and continue to support and allies are also stepping up support, partly with military equipment, uh, partly with uh, financial support, humanitarian support, but also by uh, imposing the sanctions which is uh, forcing, uh, uh, which is actually crippling uh, Russian uh, economy. Uh, our, our, our responsibility as an alliance is to protect and, and, and defend all allies and we are sending a clear message that uh, we are ready to do so by increasing the presence in the eastern part of the alliance. But again, it is Russia and President Putin that are uh, responsible for the invasion of Ukraine and uh, President Putin should end this senseless war by withdrawing its uh, forces from Ukraine. Okay, Politico. Um, thank you. I'm Lily from Politico. Um, why do the U.S. and NATO insist that uh, fighter jets won't be helpful for Ukraine when the Ukrainians themselves say otherwise? Shouldn't it be up to the Ukrainian authorities to say what would be helpful for them? Thank you. NATO allies are providing many different types of uh, equipment, including advanced air defense uh, systems, which have actually helped uh, the Ukrainians to shoot down uh, Russian planes, Russian uh, uh, missiles, uh, and the allies continue to provide uh, support also when it comes to different types of uh, air defense systems. But I will not go into the details of every type of uh, uh, supply, every type of support, exactly how and where, uh, because I think that will just make it harder and more difficult to continue to provide this type of support. Uh, we are, uh, NATO allies are, uh, stepping up and providing also advanced air defense uh, systems. Thank you. Dan Michaels, Wall Street Journal. To follow up on the uh, earlier question, uh, there have apparently been uh, UAV incursions into NATO airspace. Um, apparently one uh, Russian drone entered and left Polish airspace and another one crashed in, Na in NATO territory. Uh, how do you determine when something like that is an act of aggression or an act that warrants response? Um, and you were talking earlier about you know, escalation. Um, you know, how, how do you ensure that something like that uh, is handled in a way that you know, is, is appropriate and doesn't get out of control? 
Thank you. Um, well, I cannot confirm the latest incidents you are referring to, uh, but in general I can say that uh, we are uh, uh, stepping up our vigilance, our presence, uh, the way we monitor uh, uh, our airspace, uh, and including by deploying uh, new Patriot batteries to, to the eastern part of the Alliance. And by doing that, and also uh, through our AVAX surveillance planes and increased uh, air policing, uh, air patrolling, uh, we are uh, both increasing the capabilities we have to monitor, to track, but also to, um, uh, to uh, ensure uh, that we are able to react if, uh, if uh, needed. Um, and um, and uh, uh, NATO's integrated air and missile defense tracked the flight path of an object which entered Romanian airspace on Sunday. Uh, uh, in response, Romanian fighter aircraft scrambled immediately to investigate. Um, and. Um, and uh, uh, the Romanian authorities uh, and NATO are reviewing this incident, as we're also reviewing the incident that ended with the crash of a drone in Croatia. Um, um, uh, the, the indications we have so far on the, the drone that crashed in Croatia outside Zagreb uh, is that that was not an armed attack, not an armed drone, but it just highlights that with more military activities, uh, in the air uh, with drones, with planes, there is a risk for instance accidents and, uh, and therefore we need to be extremely vigilant, we need to uh, uh, react when needed and we need to uh, make sure that we uh, have the communications, the line of communications also with the Russians to prevent uh, incidents from really creating dangerous situations. So uh, that's the reason why we are, we are increasing the presence and also the surveillance and monitoring of the airspace uh, over NATO. Uh, Bloomberg, lady in blue, just behind. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your qu uh, the question, Natalia Drozdiak from Bloomberg. I just <coughs> wanted to follow up on what you said in your introduction about um, the risk of a uh, false flag event um, and Russia maybe using chemical weapons. How would NATO respond in such a scenario? Uh, is this a red line for potential um, NATO intervention. Thank you. Any use of, a, of chemical weapons uh, will be a violation of international law. Will uh, be a violation of the ban that uh, or the treaty that bans uh, uh, chemical weapons, and, and Russia has uh, assigned to that uh, a convention. Uh, and uh, 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 we call on Russia not to use chemical weapons. Uh, we call on Russia to withdraw all its forces and to stop the fighting. But in particular not to use any chemical uh, weapons. Um, Russia has used uh, chemical agents before uh, to attack and actually kill uh, political opponents. Um, uh, we have also seen that Russia has uh, supported the Assad regime in Syria and helped to facilitate the use of chemical weapons several times in Syria. And uh, uh, any use of chemical weapons is, is is absolutely unacceptable and, uh, and uh, therefore it is also extremely important that uh, uh, Russia understands that uh, it is uh, 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 unacceptable if they uh, consider any use of chemical weapons and we are also very vigilant uh, about the possibility of them trying to stage some kind of pretext false flag operation to provide an excuse for any type of use of chemical weapons. Okay, we'll go uh, to NPR, Deutsche Welle, Lady in Pink. Thank you very much. Um, just somewhat of a follow-up on Natalia's question. Um, the, she was asking whether NATO, what NATO would do and whether this changes your red line. So as you say that you, you are looking at, Na at NATO's military posture again, is this something that you would consider changing? You have said that this would be a war crime and we know that simply warning Russia against doing something is not enough of a deterrent to stop it. So if NATO knows or if NATO sees that a chemical attack could take place and you say that's a war crime, would NATO consider changing the fact that it would not intervene in, in, such a, in case of such a threat? Thank you. Our main uh, responsibility is to protect and defend all NATO allies. Uh, it is important that um, uh, Russia understands that uh, we are there to do exactly that. 
uh, we have conveyed a very clear message to Russia about uh, that uh, we also see when they try to uh, stage uh, pretexts for, uh, you know, for, for the use of chemical weapons. We have seen that they, uh, throughout this crisis, have tried to create different kinds of uh, false flag operations to try to provide excuses for the use of force. Uh, we saw that in the lead up to the in, in intervention, and now we have seen them ac accusing Ukraine and also NATO allies uh, uh, producing, developing uh, chemical weapons. And that's an absolute lie, and therefore it also makes us a bit concerned about the possibility that they are actually planning to do that. Um, and um, and uh, the President of the United States uh, and other allies also made it very clear that if they use chemical weapons, there will be a high price to pay. Uh, but I would not speculate about uh, any, um, any uh, um, uh, military response from the NATO side, except for saying very clearly that NATO's main responsibility is to make sure that we defend and protect all allies. Uh, DPA, gentleman in white, just behind, yeah. Oh, just, no, oh, okay. Uh, Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung. Thomas Kuczka, Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung. Secretary General, after the demise of the um, INF Treaty, it's been NATO's position that the Russian deployment of SSC-8 will not be reciprocated um, by the deployment of medium or intermediate uh, nuclear-capable missile systems. In the light of um, the Russian aggression against Ukraine and President Putin's threats, nuclear threats uh, to NATO, um, in your view, does this stance need to be reviewed? The demise of the INF Treaty was a serious setback for, uh, for international arms control because uh, the INF Treaty agreed in 1987 banned all intermediate range uh, weapon systems. Uh, and uh, then uh, over the last years, uh, over actually several years, we have seen that Russia has deployed a new missile uh, which uh, violates this uh, treaty and then that led to the demise of the treaty uh, a few years ago. Um, uh, we have stated from the NATO uh, and, and, and Russia has deployed these, uh, these weapons over now several, several years, um, um, the SSC-8. We have made it clear that uh, we will not mirror what Russia does. So we have no plans to deploy nuclear capable intermediate range uh, land-based systems in Europe. At the same time, we need to be able to make sure that we are able to respond and protect uh, all allies also in a new security environment where Russia has deployed more nuclear capable missiles. And therefore, uh, we have to do many things at the same time. We need to strengthen our air and missile defense. We are doing that. We need to invest more in advanced conventional capabilities, um, uh, including fifth generation aircraft. And I welcome the German decision to uh, invest in fifth generation aircraft. Uh, we need uh, also to uh, increase the readiness uh, uh, and our ability to monitor, detect, and of course we also need to make sure that uh, uh, NATO's nuclear deterrent remains safe and secure and effective. And that's exactly what we are doing when we are now uh, making sure that we exercise and, uh, and, uh, and uh, 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 ensure the effectiveness of our nuclear uh, deterrent. We have Associated Press. Hi, Mark from Associated Press. Mr. Secretary General, what do you know about the three European leaders visiting Ukraine today? NATO allies and the European leaders have had uh, extensive contacts with, uh, with uh, uh, Ukraine and, uh, and the political leadership in Ukraine, uh, including with President Zelensky over the, throughout the whole crisis and also to lead up to the crisis. I think it's important that uh, uh, leaders of uh, NATO countries, of European uh, member states, are engaging closely with uh, President Zelensky. Uh, we will have the, the defense minister of, uh, of uh, uh, of Ukraine attending um, uh, the, the, the NATO Defense Ministerial uh, tomorrow by video link and, uh, and therefore I think it's important that we at all levels in different formats engage uh, and meet with uh, the Ukrainian political leadership. Interfax. 
Thank you. Thank you, Interfax Ukraine, Irina Sommer. Uh, this morning, some mass media spread information about possible extraordinary summit, NATO summit, next week. Can you please confirm this? And second technical question. According to my information, it took for NATO bureaucracy one and a half week to implement Ukrainian request for fuel. Uh, can you please comment on this too? Thank you. Well, NATO allies are providing and have provided uh, uh, a lot of different types of uh, uh, support to Ukraine. Some of this is channeled to the, uh, to the NATO framework. Some are provided bilaterally. Uh, and uh, for us, it is important that we provide uh, 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 support on short notice and that we provide critical support which uh, Ukraine uh, needs. Uh, so, uh, overall, I think the message is that uh, over many years, leading up to invasion, but also after invasion, uh, allies have been very quick in stepping up and providing uh, support. Uh, and again, I'm a bit reluctant to go into all the details about exactly how and where and when. But uh, the overall picture is uh, that allies are providing uh, significant support uh, and they have done so on short notice and that's different types of weapons but also that includes uh, uh, fuel. Um, uh, uh, then, uh, well, NATO allies uh, have uh, consulted and coordinated closely uh, over several weeks, uh, both uh, in the lead up to the invasion, uh, but also after the invasion, we had a virtual summit uh, just one day after, uh, and we had have different ministerial meetings, also extraordinary ministerial meetings, and we will have an extraordinary defense ministerial meeting to, tomorrow. Uh, then we, will, we are able to convene uh, also a, a NATO summit with all the NATO leaders on short notice, but I cannot go into more details about that now. Okay, we'll take a couple of questions uh, online. Uh, we'll go to uh, you, Tarni List, uh, Augustin Payoka. Yes, uh, thank you, Anna. Uh, Secretary General, uh, I have a question which many people in Croatia are asking. How is it possible that the drone of six tons uh, heavy enters uh, NATO airspace and flies for around an hour and crashed in the capital of uh, a NATO member state? while you are so vigilant in uh, defending uh, NATO sky. And uh, do you know something more, uh, whether it really was uh, a drone without uh, a weapon or something? Because the Prime Minister and Minister of Defense said that there, were, there was an uh, explosive device uh, in this uh, flying object that crashed in Zagreb. Thank you. Well, I spoke with uh, Prime Minister Plenkovic on uh, Sunday and uh, we are working together to establish all the facts, uh, but uh, the preliminary indications and information we have is that this was an unarmed drone uh, and uh, that the drone was of course and uh, that it, uh, it, it ran out, uh, out of fuel and, uh, and crashed outside uh, uh, Zagreb or crashed in, in, uh, in Croatia. But, but we will have more confirmed uh, facts soon, but that's the uh, information we have uh, so uh, far. Um, um, uh, I think also uh, uh, it is important to, to realize that, um, that uh, uh, allies are exchanging information um, and that this uh, drone was, uh, um, uh, was tracked by the uh, the NATO's integrated air and missile defense tracked the flight of, uh, of the drone uh, uh, that uh, later crashed in Zagreb. But again, we will make sure that uh, uh, the different allies that were involved uh, share uh, all the information and then we can establish all the facts about what this happened. I think, if anything, it demonstrates the need to further strengthen integration, further strengthen uh, information sharing among allies and also to invest more and upgrade um, everything from radars uh, to, uh, to our presence of air and uh, missile defense systems. And that's exactly what we do uh, also by deploying more Patriots in the eastern part of the alliance. Okay, we'll go to uh, Robert Lupitu, uh, Calia Europeana. Thank you very much for taking my question. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, I want to ask you whether uh, there will be a speed up process 
for this establishment of the NATO bat battle group in, in Romania. And also, since you mentioned about the reset in NATO's defense posture after Russia's invasion into, into Ukraine, do you think that this reset will also mean an unitary approach both for the northern part of the eastern flank and both for the southern part of the eastern uh, flank? We, we will see the same level of troops and defense commitment in the Baltics, in Poland, and also in Romania and Bulgaria. Thank you very much. So we have already increased uh, significantly our presence uh, in the eastern part of the alliance, also in the Black Sea region, uh, with more troops. I went to uh, Romania a couple of weeks ago, and I met with uh, U.S. forces, uh, German forces, and other forces there. Uh, 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 who have actually increased their presence. And now uh, the lead elements of the NATO response force have been deployed to Romania, French troops. Uh, and this demonstrates that, that uh, uh, there is already a significant increased military presence uh, in the eastern part of the alliance. Uh, we speak about uh, 40,000 uh, forces on high readiness uh, and the direct NATO command. Then we have the national forces, we have also bilateral arrangements. Uh, so, in total, this is a quite significant uh, presence uh, uh, both in Romania the, uh, and the southeast of the alliance, but also, also in the, the Baltic region. Um, this is our uh, immediate response. Uh, and, uh, and as I said, the BAT groups is under establishment with the French led uh, VJTF uh, element. Um, uh, then uh, what we will discuss at the defense ministerial meeting is not only the immediate response and need for support to Ukraine, but we will also look at uh, uh, the need to reset uh, our presence, our deterrence and defense uh, posture in light of uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the integration of uh, Russian and uh, Belarusian forces. Uh, that will take some more time because I think we need... Um, uh, uh, to assess the different options. We need advice from our military commanders, and I expect that the ministers, uh, when they meet tomorrow, will agree a tasking, will agree to ask our military commanders uh, to provide advice for a more longer-term uh, adaptation. So I think it's important to distinguish clearly about the immediate response, all the tens of thousands of more troops, air, air uh, power and naval power, uh, and then the more long-term uh, adjustment of our posture. They will take some more time before we take final decisions. I expect that to be made at, um, at the uh, NATO summit uh, at the end of uh, June. Thank you very much. This concludes this press conference. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.